Okay, this is the tutorial for lesson five, and uh, what you can see, what I've already done is I've uh, I used to have lesson four on here. I went to file save as, and I went ahead and uh, saved this as lesson five. That way, I have all my layers ready to go, and everything is set up, and it makes it much easier. And then I went ahead and deleted all this stuff from lesson four. So uh, lesson five, we're going to deal be dealing with a couple different things. Uh, the first thing it wants us it wants to show us in uh, lesson five a is uh, the polygon tool and you'll be able to find the polygon tool over here on the left hand side just go ahead and click on polygon and uh, currently uh, you can go any any number from three which would be a triangle four squares and rectangles uh, obviously five being a pentagon six being a hexagon and so on I think it goes all the way up to a thousand and twenty four sides which to be honest with you would probably look uh, pretty much like a circle unless it was really big so uh, we're going to go ahead and stick with a, uh, a hexagon because I believe that's what it wants in 5A. So I'm going to go ahead and hit 6 enter. And it says I can either hit S for the side length or I can specify the center point. I'm just going to click and specify the center point. And now I have some options. I either need to hit corner or side and I'm going to show you both of these. So I'll start out with corner or CO enter. And as you can see it's going from the center of the polygon to the corner of the, uh, the polygon. Uh, one thing also to notice is I, I currently have ortho on, so my only options are to go this way or straight up and down. If I turn ortho off, then I have a lot more options to freely move this thing around. Uh, to be honest with you, I think it's easier with ortho on, so I leave it on. So that would be corner, uh, that guy right there. I'm going to do this all again, and I'm going to do the side one. So six sides, enter. Uh, specify the center point, and we'll do it right here. And I'll hit S, enter for side, and specify distance. And now you can see that this one is going to the side of the uh, the polygon, not to the corner. Uh, and those of you that will remember, if you do the hex nut blank, you will remember one of these as being uh, capital R, which would be going to the corner, and one of these as being little r, which is going to the side. So those are the differences, uh, and it will probably come up with the drawing that you're going to draw, uh, whether you need to do either one of those. So those are options that you have. All right. Uh, so that would be uh, kind of what this guy would look like, and uh, we should be good to go pretty much. So I'm going to get rid of one of those. Then it looks like what it has is it has a, uh, a circle in the middle. And generally what I like to do is I like to, to just draw a line straight through the center of these and then snap my circle to the midpoint of that line, and then I can easily snap my circle uh, to the edge of this. And you can see when I click on this, that the circle is touching both at the top and the bottom and this circle would be inscribed uh, the polygon okay uh, if I needed to draw another circle one that was on the outside I could easily do that by drawing this line drawing a circle here and uh, snapping it to the outside or to that point right there and then this circle would be known as circumscribed about and circumscribed obviously means on the outside uh, so this is circumscribed about the uh, the polygon. So there's a circle on the outside and a circle on the inside. So those are those are two different circles that you may need uh, for lesson 5a. Then I think just think it wants you to draw some lines, and I think using the object snap or entity snap toolbar, uh, you should be able to figure that out fairly easily. Okay, so that'd be 5a. Uh, moving on to 5b. 5b looks pretty similar. However, one thing they do want you to start out with is a point. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the uh, the word point. And it says uh, multiple or settings. I'm going to go ahead and hit S for settings. Because uh, currently, the type of point that is set as the default is just a little tiny point and it's very hard to see. So I like using either this one or one of these that's a bit easier to see. Uh, personally, I like the little X. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that guy. Click OK, and now when I specify the position, there is my point right there. Okay, and the, the whole reason for this is I'm now going to use uh, snap. So I'm going to delete that point. I'm going to type in. I'm going to make sure snap is on now, so it's snapping all the way around. And if I wanted to, I could turn on my grid, and I, my my grid just must be too small to too small to see. So that's okay now. So it doesn't really matter because snap is on uh, whether my grid is or not. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to type in point and I'm going to go ahead and specify the position which will be right there. 
and then I'm going to go to polygon and I'm going to specify the number of sides which is currently on six I'm going to keep it on six I'm going to specify the center point which is going to be right there and I'm going to specify uh, S enter for the side distance and I might go that that big right there and again I think this is much easier if you have ortho on and I'm going to do that whole thing again uh, specify the same center point uh, same side option and this time I'm going to go out two and then I'm just going to keep doing this over and over and over again uh, same center point click side and now I'm going to go out three and I think I got to do this you know a few more times but you get the idea and the nice thing about having uh, having ortho on is and, and snap on is it makes them perfectly equal every single time it snaps one one uh, dot bigger every single time so it's going to look like exactly what you need it to look like okay uh, so that is pretty much that guy um, you know another thing is changing this point should you need to uh, you can always change the uh, the point if, if you need to by going to point and uh, changing the settings and maybe you don't like the X maybe you want to change it to a little circle with a dot in it you could go ahead and do that and now there's your little circle with a dot in it. so you can change the point however you see fit so uh, that's 5b 5c goes ahead goes ahead and gets into uh, two ellipses and an ellipse is right over here so I click on ellipse and I can either you know start it and just kind of go out as far as I want again I have ortho on click again and I go up and down and I go like this or I go left and right or you know you just kind of make the ellipse look like what you want to look like uh, especially since right now we're kind of in the etch-a-sketch mode dimensions are not that crucial and one thing I would generally do to uh, to kind of make the uh, the little hurricane guy is I would find one uh, ellipse and I make a I just keep pasting it and just kind of keep setting it up how I want to how I want it to look and it makes it real easy and the other nice thing about these ellipses is if I want to make one smaller I can easily do so just by playing around with the grips so that makes that kind of easy um, one thing that a lot of people do uh, do mess up on is the uh, the eyelashes for the eye of the storm uh, and this brings us back to the previous lesson is just using line and then snap to perpendicular so I'm going to go ahead and start a line and then I'm going to go on uh, snap to perpendicular and make sure it snaps every single time so I'm going to start line and then snap to perpendicular every single time and then that way I know that it's, it's working properly so there's my line snap to perpendicular no matter where I am every single time it's going to snap perpendicular and that will make sure all of the eyelashes are at a 90 degree angle so that should help you out with uh, lesson 5C. Moving on to 5D, I think you know with ellipses, I don't think that's anything uh, anything new or anything you can't handle. Just make sure you snap them appropriately, and I think you can get it to look like what it looks like in the picture. And then moving on to 5E, we get into what are called donuts. So for 5E, you can go ahead and type in the word donut. And it says specify the inside diameter. I'm going to make mine one. And it says specify the outside diameter. I'm going to make mine three and hit enter. And so there is a donut with the inside diameter from there to there being one and the outside diameter uh, being three. And I can do another one. Donut, uh, inside diameter, maybe I'll make 0.25. And outside diameter, maybe I'll make five. And it may look something like, like that guy. So you can make these donuts pretty much have whatever inside or outside diameter that you, that you see fit. And uh, these are these work good for wheels of cars, should you be making something like that or things like that. Uh, just in case yours doesn't look like mine, you do have to make sure fill is on. And to check, I would type in fill, enter, and uh, currently mine is on, I know it is. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, enter. And, uh, and and there it is. And now now you, you can see it's just a bunch of lines. So if I want to turn it back on, fill, enter, on, enter, and uh, and there you have it. So you can turn that on or off. And it has you make what looks to be like kind of a little uh, bullseye target for uh, lesson 5e. Uh, 5f is uh, is very similar. Um, you know you can use ellipses. You're going to be snapping those donuts to the uh, to the 
to the uh, hexagon, to the points of the hexagon, and it has you turn fill off. One thing that you will notice is when you turn fill off for uh, for 5F, it's also going to turn it off for uh, for the previous one, for the target one, which is okay. I just need to make sure you guys know how to turn it on and off. So that is, uh, is pretty basic stuff. Also make sure you follow the correct layers that it tells you, because it tells you to use a bunch of different layers for exercise 5F. Moving on to 5G. Uh, 5G, it's got, you know, a couple, couple little angle guys that may look, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn E track on. That may look something like this. And one thing I like to do is go ahead and copy and paste these guys. Let's see, move button. And now I can copy and paste those. And I can move those guys and just snap these and make them look something like that. And what it wants me to do is it wants me to put circles uh, in between. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and click on circle. And it says specify uh, center point. And so I can type in MTP, enter. And it says specify first point of mid, which would be right there. And it says specify second point of mid, which would be right there. And no matter what I do, uh, that would be the midpoint of my circle. And one easy way to tell is to draw a line from there to there. And if I click on a line here, and if I click on the circle here, th those squares are exactly the same. Okay? So if I click on just the circle, there's that square. And if I click on just that, there's that square. But if I click on them both, you can see that square is one and the same, and that's how I know. So one more time. Uh, go ahead and click on the circle command, type in MTP, and it tells you this in the book. Specify first point of mid, so it says the command line, which is going to be right there. Specify the second point, and now I can make my circle whatever size. It asks me to specify the radius in the command line, but again, for this one, it doesn't really give me any dimension, so I'm just going to, you know, make it that big, and, and that will be good to go. All I'm concerned about is that you make it exactly in the center. So that is 5G, and that uh, wraps it up for Lesson 5. I'll see you again in Lesson 6.